In this video, I'll go over the solutions to the length of curves practice problems. So here we have a curve in two dimensions, and we're asked to find the length. So the formula that we need to remember looks like this. The length of the curve is the integral from a to b of the square root of the x component squared plus the derivative of the y component squared, where this first function is what I'm calling f, and the second function is what I'm calling g. So now we just need to work that out. The derivative of cosine cubed of t, that's going to be 3 cosine squared of t times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, and then we square that, and then add that to the derivative of the sine cubed of t. Similarly, that's 3 times the sine squared of t times the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and then we square that. Now generally these integrals turn out to be pretty nasty, but this one we're actually going to be able to do, so let's work it out. Oh, and I should have said, instead of a and b here, I'm given my two uh, bounds, which is 0 and pi over 2. So integral from 0 to pi over 2. All right, when we work this out, we're going to get 9 cosine to the fourth of t sine squared of t plus 9 sine to the fourth of t cosine squared of t. And I can actually factor that quite significantly. I can factor out a 9, of course. And I can also factor out a sine squared and a cosine squared. So I get 9 cosine squared of t sine squared of t times cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t. And conveniently, cosine squared plus sine squared, that's just 1. So we get the square root of 9 cosine squared sine squared, and when we take the square root, we get 3 cosine of t sine of t. And that's a much easier integral than it looked like it was going to be. And in fact, we can do a quick, simple substitution. u equals sine of t, du will be cosine of t, dt. And so when we do that, we get the integral from 0 to 1 of 3u du. That's 3 halves u squared from 0 to 1. Plug in and subtract, and we get 3 halves. Similar problem here. Here we have a uh, curve in three dimensions, and again we're asked to, to find the length of the curve, and we're also asked to approximate our answer to two decimal places. So again, we're going to kind of proceed in the same way. So here's my x function, here's my y function, here's my z function. So the formula for arc length is going to be the integral from a to b, dx dt squared plus dy dt squared plus dz dt squared all integrated with respect to t. So now let's fill in. We've got 0 to 4. The derivative of 2t is 2, so that's 2 squared. Derivative of minus t squared, that's negative 2t. And the derivative of 5t cubed is 15t squared. And if we simplify that, unfortunately, there's not really going to be much that we can do to make this any easier. So at this point, we're kind of stuck uh, in terms of doing it by hand. Uh, but now we go to Mathematica, go to our technology, and here's what we get. The command I'm using is n integrate, so that's just numerical integrate. That basically tells Mathematica, hey, just go ahead and use a whole bunch of rectangles and, and approximate this. Um, and it doesn't take Mathematica too long to come up with our answer here, which is conveniently already rounded to two decimal places, 321.36. Now we have an example of finding arc length and polar coordinates. So here we have the curve uh, 2 minus 2 sine theta. Again, we can use Mathematica to get a plot of that to make it a little easier to think about. And we set up our integral like this. Our formula is going to be that s equals the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of f of theta squared plus f prime of theta squared. So in this case, my alpha and beta are just 0 and 2 pi. My f of theta, that's going to be 2 minus 2 sine theta squared. F prime of theta is going to be minus 2 cosine theta. And then I integrate that with respect to theta. Now we can work that out. We can do a little bit of simplification, but it's not really going to get us to the point where we can actually do it easily by hand. So again, this is a place where we would appeal to Mathematica to evaluate this for us. Like I said, we can simplify it a little bit. Like if I multiply this out, I get 4 minus 8 sine theta plus 4 sine squared of theta, and then plus 4 cosine squared of theta. 
4 sine squared plus 4 cosine squared, that's 4. So we do simplify it a little bit. That gets us to 8 minus 8 sine theta. But then we're kind of stuck. So at this point, again, we'll go to Mathematica. It does turn out that the integral is uh, doable nicely. We don't need the n integrate command. We can actually just integrate from 0 to 2 pi, and we get the answer of 16. All right, now we have a couple questions about uh, parameterization by arc length. So we're given a curve, and we're asked whether or not it's parameterized by arc length. And if it's not, what we'd like to do is find a parameterization that is parameterized by arc length. So for this one, we're going to examine the arc length function, which is that s of t is the integral from 0 to t, or actually a to t, but in this case my curve starts at 0, so I'm going to start my integral at 0, from 0 to t of the magnitude of v of u du. And this is essentially the same integral that we've been doing, it's just thinking about it in a different way. So r of u, if I just change the parameter, that doesn't change anything other than the name of the letter, so that's cosine u squared sine of u squared. And then v of u, that's just the derivative, so that's going to be negative sine of u squared times 2u, and then a cosine of u squared times 2u. So the magnitude of v of u is simply the square root of the sum of the squares of those derivatives. So that's the same integral that we've been doing. So square root of negative sine of u squared times 2u squared plus cosine of u squared times 2u squared du. Now, something like the n integrate command in Mathematica isn't going to be helpful here because my upper bound of my integral is t. So there's no way to numerically evaluate this integral. We really knew, do need to find a formula for this antiderivative. So any question like this that you would get, the integral will be doable. So let's actually square these things and work it out and see what we come up with. So 0 to t. Rearranging this a little bit, I get 4u squared times sine squared of u squared plus 4u squared times cosine squared of u squared. Factor out the 4u squared. And I get sine squared of u squared plus cosine squared of u squared du. And sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. It doesn't matter that it's a u squared on the inside here. It's the same angle. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. I get the square root of 4u squared. That's 2u. So that's u squared evaluated from 0 to t. So that's t squared. And what we got was not t. So this is not t. And that means that this is not parameterized by arc length. So if the question is, is this parameterized by arc length, yes or no? Since the integral turned out to not be just t, the answer is no. So now we do the follow-up question, which is to find a new description of the curve that is parameterized by arc length. And so we use this formula that we just came up with. We just figured out that s equals t squared. So that means that t is the square root of s. And so we're going to have a new description of my curve. I'll call this maybe r1 of s, which is just simply the original r with this formula for t plugged in. Now my original formula was cosine of t squared, so this is cosine of the square root of s squared, comma, the sine of t squared, so that's sine of the square root of s squared. Work that out, we just get cosine of s, sine of s, and now our original uh, parameterization went from t equals 0 to the square root of pi. Since s is t squared, s will then go between 0 squared and the square root of pi squared. So this parameterization is good for s between 0 and pi. And there's our new description of this curve, and this one is parameterized by arc length. Similar question here, same approach. Rewrite r of t in terms of r of u so that we can set up our integral. So that's just e to the u, e to the u, e to the u. My v vector, my velocity, is just going to be e to the u, e to the u, e to the u, because the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. So now I set up my arc length integral. I'm integrating, again, I'm starting at 0. So I start my integral at 0. So integral from 0 to t of the magnitude of v of u. 
So this is the square root of e to the u squared plus e to the u squared plus e to the u squared du. So inside that square root, I've got 3e to the 2u. Take the square root, that's going to give me th square root of 3 times e to the u. That's an easy antiderivative, that's just square root of 3 times e to the u. Plug in t, plug in 0, and subtract. And that's going to give me square root of 3 times e to the t minus 1. And that's not t. So again, unless I get exactly t out of this integral, this curve is not parameterized by arc length. So I need to solve that equation for uh, t. So the equation that I just came up with was that s equals square root of 3 times e to the t minus 1. Solving that for uh, t, I get that t equals the natural log of, the, of s divided by the square root of 3 plus 1. So I divide both sides by square root of 3, add 1 to both sides, take the natural log of both sides, that gives me t solved like that. So my new description of my curve, again I'll call it r1, r1 of s is just simply the original r with this plugged in for t, natural log of s over the square root of 3 plus 1. And when I plug that in, I just get e to that expression three times. e to the natural log of s over the square root of 3 plus 1, e to the natural log of s over the square root of 3 plus 1. The e's and the natural logs cancel each other out, so I just get s over radical 3 plus 1, s over radical 3 plus 1, s over radical 3 plus 1. In my original function, t had to be greater than or equal to 0, so that means s is going to have to be greater than or equal to what we get when we plug in t equals 0. And when we plug in t equals 0, s is also 0. If I plug t equals 0 into this expression, I get e to the 0 minus 1, that's 0, so this is also good for s greater than or equal to 0. And there's my new parameterization, and again, this one is parameterized by arc length.